Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Quran is the miracle of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it resonates with everyone everywhere at any time. Be it our brothers and sisters in Palestine or Kashmir or China or Yemen or Syria or Iraq or Libya or anywhere in the world, in the East, in the West, Quran is a daily dose for your spiritual need. Just as we require a good breakfast and food and something nutritious in the morning, we require this spiritual dose to sustain and maintain our ability of being spiritually alive. <clears throat> it speaks to everyone at any level, individual or collective. And people who are oppressed or they are oppressor, people, people who do their job in farming or at academia and university, people who are uh, 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 male or female, people who are in the hospitals or somewhere else in the marketplace. Quran talks to you and I each and every day. And when we read Quran, it's a solace. It's a peaceful reminder. It's a soothing process. It's a cure for any disease. The Prophet Sallallahu says, Alaykum bishifa'ain. You need to stick to two type of cures and treatments. One is Al-Qur'an and the other one is Al-Asal, honey. So let's ponder over the Qur'an every day. And particularly when we are going through really tough time in different places, particularly in the Middle East and in Palestine, in Gaza, people are attacked and massacred cold-bloodedly just because they defend themselves. You and I have the right to defend. United Nations Chartered says clearly that every person, every nation, every community has a right to defend themselves. You take on your weapon to defend yourself, your children, your territory. So what about the fact that if somebody comes and attacks you inside your house, takes your house, corner you into a biggest, the biggest prison, open air prison in the world. And not only that, they control the airspace, the sea, the land, every single thing in the coming in the outings, they all control that. And not only for a day or a year or a decade, but for 75 constant years. And then they do not give you any opportunity to work or have any business. And they then do not treat you equally. They do not provide for you hospitals, schools, education. They do not allow you to cross over the border. Instead, they build walls and barriers and barricades and so on and on and on. And time to time, they bombard you with so many uh, humiliating uh, attacks, whether they are in the media, whether they are uh, physical attacks through weaponries. And they are the most powerful army in terms of their weapons, in terms of their intelligence, in terms of everything, and you are the weakest physically. So what else is left for you if you are a believer, particularly except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn to? Except Allah wahdahu azza wa jal who is the powerful and who says that my might and power is unmatchable. Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. He is the creator of everything. My brothers and sisters around the world, let's ponder over the reality of the life. This life is a test whether you are being oppressed or you are being treated very badly, unjustly. There is a day that we call the day of judgment that Allah will reward people with the best of reward. And that's what he says. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not feel weak. Do not give up and do not feel sad. You will be dominating if you are muttaqeen, if you are the, you know, God uh, conscious and mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence because he loves those who are muhsineen. He loves those who are treating others in a nice way. We should not let, obviously, 
the adal, the justice slip from our hands just because we don't like someone or s something like that. There's no you know, equal ground, obviously, in this case, but our eyes are all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy. And when they stand up, we will not feel coward to say, well, you know, that's their problem. No, excuse me, but you're not focusing on the apartheid. The apartheid that is there for the last, you know, uh, 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 whole century imposed by the biggest nations of the, of the world on the uh, uh, smallest nation of the world, that is Palestine. That's the, the problem. The problem is not one side attacking the other or the other defending and whatnot. This is not war. War is fought on equal terms. This is not a war. I'm saying again, this is apartheid. Unless and until there's peace in the Middle East, there'll be no, you know, the, 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 there's justice in Palestine, there'll be no peace. Peace comes through justice. Let's just treat others equally and let's just turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Muslims to help us in this situation. And Allah knows what good comes out of these situations. But this is not the first time and this will not be the last time. But we pray and we besiege the mercy and invoke the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our brothers and sisters and to bestow upon them the patience and the perseverance and the steadfastness. And Muslims around the world are standing with their brothers and sisters in Palestine and anywhere in the world when they are oppressed. We stand with each and every one, wherever they are, um, whether they are Muslim or not. When they are oppressed, we will stand with them. That is Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.